So today we're taking a look at the Veneto, the tier 8 Italian battleship in the tech tree this time. And this ship, you might think, is just a Roma. It looks very much like a Roma, but there's a few key differences. Uh, number one, this ship has 0.2 worse sigma. Uh, Roma gets 0.8 sigma. This ship gets 1.6 sigma. And if you don't know what Sigma is, it's basically the tendency of the shells to go to the center of your dispersion ellipse. Um, so it does help with accuracy. Dispersion is also a big one. I believe the dispersion charts are basically the same. Um, this one just will be slightly less accurate. The other thing, longer reload time than Roma, slightly worse HP. AA is basically the same in saying that it's useless. Uh, the speeds bit is the same, turning radius, rudder shift time, all basically the same. A little bit different here and there. The other massive change about this ship, compared to Roma, is your concealment. 12.8 uh, kilometers detection on the Veneto, and Roma gets a really comfortable 11.7. And that is, that's a pretty big difference. Um, it means that the Veneto is kind of average as far as concealment goes at tier 8, uh, whereas the Roma is by far one of the best concealed battleships at tier 8. It's really, 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 really good. I That's one of the best parts about Roma, is how good the concealment is, but that might not be an issue because we have a smoke screen, and smoke screen that lasts nearly a minute and is a fuel smoke, so we can be going at full speed. So that's kind of the equipment and that kind of stuff. Uh, here's my here's my commander, 10 points. I don't have a very strong commander on this one yet, but this is what I would recommend to start with. This is what I would like to use. Uh, I like this just to get extra time on the smoke screen, but you could definitely run priority target or vigilance or turret traverse instead. Um, doesn't really matter. I just like having that little bit of extra time on my on my smokes. And I find it very, very, very useful. So, obviously the other difference is this ship gets SAP. I should have said that earlier. But SAP instead of HE. So, that's the the big change here. Alright, so welcome to my first game ever in this ship. Um, I want to clear something up just really quick. Uh, my first impressions of ships are my first games. Uh, I'm going to be looking at these ships in a relatively positive light, trying to find the strengths of the ship. I'm trying to figure out how to play the ship. You shouldn't take these first impressions as a review of the ship, because I've only played the couple of games that are in this video. And the reviews are based on probably, I would say at least 20 games, maybe more. Um, that translates into six hours plus of gameplay. And that's really what I want to put forward in review. I want to put forward a an opinion based on my experience with the ship. And that's what the reviews are for. These first impressions really are just my first impressions of the ship. I, I haven't played it at all yet, and I'm trying to figure the ships out. So uh, don't treat this as like a recommendation or... A condemnation of a ship. It's just how I'm feeling after my first couple of games, so. With that said, this is the first game and we got really unlucky. The only thing that could be worse about this game is if there's an aircraft carrier. This is by far the worst game mode on the worst map for this game mode. So we're gonna be struggling a little bit here in this first game, but I think we can make it work. This smoke screen might actually allow me to uh, carry the game later game if we have to get into this middle cap here the the smoke can definitely help out with that so we'll be looking for that but Roma has really good armor that's the thing and so does Venanto by extension and the hope is that we can use that armor to our advantage we basically have tier 9 level of tankiness if you're counting the Marco Polo as tier 9 <laughs> It's, the, tier, the the Marco Polo is, it, it has like 5,000 HP more than this. Maybe a little less than that. So, kind of rough. 14,000 damage already out of the Sap. Sap is a very strong ammo type, guys. Very strong. 
normally I wouldn't go here. I wouldn't play so aggressively bow in, especially in a tier 10 game, let's be honest. Tier 10 is pretty scary, but I think I can get away with it because of this smoke screen. That's what this smoke screen affords me to do. Uh, yeah. Looks like they're going to be pushing up the 2-3 line-ish area. Look at that! 12,000! Wow. Sap, guys. You're guaranteed full pens. Well, not guaranteed. But if you are if you pen, you're guaranteed full pens. Not over pens, which is really, really, really nice. Easily one of the best parts about this entire line is not having to deal with over pens. One of the most frustrating parts of this game. And Sap lets you ignore that. Of course, the issue is the slightly longer reload that you're paying compared to Roma on this ship, and the worst dispersion that you saw right there. But it's still, we're nearly at 30,000 damage already. It's a great start. Really, really, really good start. You can see the enemy team is leaving this side pretty dramatically, so we're probably going to have to go over, I don't know, and deal with the Columbo and the GK and the Moskva eventually. If I had Sansonetti on this uh, ship, I would have swapped to AP there. The reason being, the German upper belts um, are going to shatter my sap. So we can only really pen our sap shells on his superstructure. And we can get some good damage like you saw earlier, but the sap is best when shooting at the hull of an opponent. That's really what you're looking to uh, to hit, the hull, because that has the most HP. I did repair that. That might seem like a risky repair, but I don't think I'm going to get spotted here anytime soon. And if I do, and I get in trouble, it, I can just use my smoke to get away. This is a wonderful get out of, uh, get out of jail free card. Assuming those, there's no radar around, and I'm smart enough to not uh, smart enough to not use it after I shoot. <laughs> That's the biggest thing as well. Torps from the middle. It's fine. Another pen, forty one k. So for reference, my Roma gets around 100k average damage. Montana's shooting at us. We're going to accelerate to hopefully dodge this a little bit. The Veneto has a very small superstructure, as you can see. And that means Battleship shooting you bow on. Oh, he aimed really far in front. Okay. Battleship shooting you bow on are going to struggle to... Uh, to actually do much damage to you. Which is really, really handy. We'll take that shot. Try and make sure we get some damage on this Wooster. Another 6k? Possible we Citadel if we uh, load AP, but it's not that big of a difference, honestly. A couple of overpens, are not, and not hitting the Citadel at all means we're just going to deal very little damage. Whereas, Sap is consistent. It's quite wonderful. The dispersion's not even awful on this ship. Wow. Look at that. As we miss. <laughs> he probably dodged. Turned out, slowed down, that kind of thing. We have so many people here. Mm. Tricky game. I'm fine with my position here, so far. If they really make a hard push, I do have to get out of here, though, somehow. Oh, that island's in the way. Get a shot of the Monty, at least. We'll get lit for that. That's okay. We might have to just bow in over here. Ah, oh, just shatters. Too bad. Too bad. That's okay. Just 
Sawyer's eating torpedoes. We do have control, relatively, of the caps, you know? What a weird game. Turning out. Turning back in. That should be a good hit. I'm watching to see if this Montana turns and looks at me. Looks like he is. Somehow we missed that Wooster. That's kind of surprising. I thought my aim was pretty decent there. Yeah, our armor gets significantly worse if we're not angled. Got pretty greedy for that shot. Yeah, I'm starting to not like my position here. I think we'll just smoke and turn out. Maybe we'll try and go a little bit wider. Maybe we'll try and push down the 9 line. I do have Expert Loader, but not, not the improved one, so that's why we have this kind of unfortunate reload with our with our hot swap. But we're going to load AP because this Montana is sure to turn out. There's no way he doesn't, in my mind. This is a really nice use of smoke as well. Oh, that is so sad that he goes dark there. One of the issues with smoke, you're not spotting when you get it. <laughs> if you're curious with how to use your smoke screens, that kind of thing, uh, I do have a video that I just put out on how I think you should be using your smoke screens in Italian battleships. I think it's a pretty solid video. A lot of good pointers in it. Nice. Good citadel there. But you see, we lost our destroyers. And somehow we lost all our battleships, too. <laughs> or not our battleships, cruisers. I don't know. They just had a better team than us. I'm a tier 8 in a tier 10 game. I can't do a lot to win the game. I can help, but I can't carry it out for my teammates, you know? We do have a really nice angle here. And again, the the AP on these guns are very good. They have really high pen. And they do a lot of damage. You just have to deal with overpens. We have time though. That's the really nice thing right now, is that we have time. It's possible we bring this back with their team just so heavily pushing middle. It's really is possible we come back from this. I need to play really aggressive. I think I'm going to try and get to this island right here. Because they're all going to be pushing like this, and if I can catch them in a crossfire... The farther down I come here, the more they're caught in a crossfire between our our, uh, our guys. My smoke will be up in a minute 25. Should be good. Don't really want to shoot at that. Yeah, that's what I want to shoot at. Kill him? Hmm, only one hit. There's the uh, poor dispersion rearing its ugly head. Oh, my team is really slow on the uptake. These guys are not playing very well at all. You notice how there weren't any shells coming in from them? onto the uh, spotted cruiser in the middle of the map. <laughs> That's okay. You can't have a good team every game. Try and make the most of it here. Maybe we can kill this Worcester. MK. Not amazing for four hits. Yeah, rough team. Rough team. Good. 
I can't get that shot in. Sucks to suck. And I gave Broadside to do it. I think I want AP here. 13,000 is better. I I'm just going to get into the cap middle cap to stall it. And I'm just going to sit here bow in. This is the best we can do right now. Hopefully we can kill that Columbo. Please! Team, he's healing, just shoot him! Close game though. Those are fun. Well, kinda. Nice, 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 nice. Good job, Columbo. Shoot there. Oh, our Conqueror is sitting broadside. Too bad. This is a good ship, guys. I think. Again, this is first impressions. But my first impressions are pretty positive of this ship, I think. Even though we lost this game. Pretty positive. We're Hydro. Right. So what are we going to do here? We're going to try and dev strike the Lion while ramming the Freddy. <laughs> that is the goal. I don't think I have a ram flag, which is unfortunate. Right, we got to shoot this guy now. Nearly. 215,000 from first game in the Veneto. <laughs> Am I just going to have good games in every first uh, impressions video? Uh, that won't happen. Look at that, a 3v3, or a 2v3, sorry, at the end of this. And our GK could easily kill this, uh, or our Conqueror could easily kill this GK. Oh, he got Citadeled. Interesting. GK with good long-range dispersion? Nah, it's fine. Well, we'll see what happens with this game. Ah, unfortunate. Our Conqueror didn't uh, aim particularly well, <laughs> and the GK lived, and then our Otago just sailed broadside to everybody. Unfortunate. Still, really good first game. <laughs> 215k? Obviously, some of that is ramming the Freddy, but I'll take it, honestly. Hmm, not a lot of map rotation, huh? <laughs> you guys want to uh, see better on a map like this, you can increase your fog transparency. And there you go. You can see how much clearer it gets. You go all the way. There you go. You can see! Unfortunately, the islands start looking bad because they're uh, not the best assets in the world, so having a bit of fog helps them look a little bit better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a little trick if you want to see a little better in some of these really stormy maps. Oh, this sucks. There's CV spawned on this side. That's awful. Well... We're not going to be allowed to have fun this game. <laughs> Too bad, man. Too bad. An easy smoke screen, though. Very easy smoke screen. <laughs> that's, so, that's one of the big weaknesses of playing this ship and this class in general. You die very quickly to carriers. Unfortunately, our Otland decided to take a gunfight with an Akazuki. Although, torpedo hit. Waiting for the right moment. 
right there. Maybe. Two hits. He's low. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't such a bad idea after all. He was excellent bait. Can't push over here though, guys. Just impossible. Just impossible to push this side. That was nearly the dispersion we needed to uh, kill that guy. Very close. So playing in a CV game with these Italian battleships always is going to be a challenge. It really is just going to be rough. What you have to do is play next to your teammates. And that that's why instead of pushing this flank like I wanted to, uh, that's why I'm moving back towards my mines, my Ismail, that kind of thing. Because they are, they are gonna be what help keep me alive in this game. People really don't like CVs. <laughs> they really, really don't like CVs. It's funny. Polarizing stuff keeps people engaged, though. I don't think Wargaming minds people being angry. What they're trying to avoid is apathy or indifference. As soon as you become indifferent to what's going on, you just stop playing the game. My guess. I don't know for sure, though. But there's a few reasons they probably leave aircraft carriers in the way they are. One of them probably has to do with the amount of time they invested into them. <laughs> But man, a lot of people don't like them. <laughs> 12,000 damage so far. Not the best start. But we can push here now. Now that our mines is around, we have an Auntland that's, you know. Whose shells are these? Uso? Uso, I guess. Hmm. Weird. We should be getting big hits into this New Mexico. The reason is we overmatch him, so we're basically guaranteed full pens, unless we hit his armored belt. I don't know, these American uh, battleships are difficult to do much sap damage to. I've been struggling to do a bunch of sap damage to Vermont. Vermont's one of the harder ships to deal damage to, for some reason. Even though it's big and clunky. That guy is very low. Where are you? Nice, he got him. <laughs> got mines? Hold on. Where are those torpedo bombers going? They might come for me. They do, I do have smoke. Ooh, gift in a citadel to the uh, Veneto. Too bad. Oh, look at him just scrubbing the border like this. Wargaming, please. Just make people take damage when they're on the border. Please, dude. It's so lame. It's so lame. Nobody wants to play that like that, or play against people that play like that. Alright, we'll try again. Upper belt. Really high. 6k only. Alright, I think I just need to use uh, AP against these guys against the uh, slow, fat American battleship line. I don't really know what to call them. Look at this guy, he's still on the border. He's still just sitting there on the border. Like, there's nothing happening. That's crazy. That is crazy. I hope they change border mechanics at some point. That would be very nice. 
Look at this turret traverse, though. I don't even have turret traverse mod. How nice is that? Alrighty. Oh, he's coming for me. You know what that means, right? And now here's what we do. We pick the right time, when the Veneto probably gets comfortable to do his turn, to pop our plane. <laughs> Hopefully, that lights him up. Hmm. Too bad we didn't get him in his turn. He's still on the border, guys. He's still on the border, I repeat. What a disgusting player. This CV is very thirsty for me. See, if CV players didn't play like this, um, I think people would be a lot more okay with aircraft carriers. But they seem to play in one of the more frustrating ways, where they just focus one player out. They get their eyes fixed on one player, and they just only go after that guy. First it was this Ismail, and then once the Ismail stepped off a bit, then it just switched over to me. And then... I don't know. Maybe it'd be cool if there was some incentive to vary the target selection up a little bit. I don't know. It's a little weird to me. <laughs> but that certainly doesn't help. The way people play them does not help uh, people feel better about uh, aircraft carriers in this game. Woo, an overpan at that angle? Crazy. So you got one good game and one really bad game. <laughs> Unfortunate. But that's what this game is. As soon as there's a blowout like this, you're just going to have bad games. You're just going to have bad games. That's okay. One team is just better than another. He's unlikely to give me broadside, so we'll switch to sap. And a turret, even. Wow. I think this ship's pretty good. It's nowhere near as accurate as Roma, but it has Roma armor. And that's probably good enough. The smoke screen really can carry it. Which is really, really, really nice in my mind. And you have sap, which helps you deal with uh, angled targets, cruisers that you'll often just overpen. It's one of the biggest issues with the, uh... That's one of the biggest issues with the Roma. Is you're just overpenning most of the time with your shells because they fly so quick and they have so much pen. They just fly right through cruisers, so... This guy looks like he wants to ram. I don't want to ram. Not this game. So he just shot, so we may as well just turn out, right in his face. Without a smoke, even. Six K. A lot of shatters on that one. I think we hit his turrets a lot there. Nice. Angled, even. 56 K. Rough game. But we get one good one, one bad one. I'll take that. I'll take that. This ship seems like a decent ship to grind out. I would not free XP this one. Especially given how well it performed in the uh, tier 10 game. You have really good armor. As long, assuming you keep it angled. And you can keep it angled because these smoke screens are just so good. Really, this ship is just going to be a bit frustrating for people because the dispersion is not amazing. <laughs> It really isn't anything to write home about. And as you get into the higher tier Italian battleships, tier 9 and 10, you get enough shells to make up for the lack of dispersion. 
But these Italian battleships are good. They promote pushing in, uh, assuming there's not an aircraft carrier, and they can really do a lot of work, even in even in games where they're bottom tier, as you saw in that earlier one. You just got to play them aggressively enough, and you have to get a little bit lucky with Matchmaker. Games that are blowouts like this one, right, the enemy team didn't really control any of the capture zones at any point in time. That's a blowout in my mind. So, it's a good ship. Um, again, first impressions, is these are my first two games, not a review, but it seems like a pretty solid ship that you can do well in, in both top tier and bottom tier games. So, thank you guys for watching, I appreciate that, and I hope you have a great day.